All over Europe, people return to their homelands, to their families and their personal fates, to their private lives, to their homes. The Red Army has freed millions of people who were doomed to die and brought them back to the realm of the living. What remained? Buchenwald, Belsen, Dachau, Majdanek or Treblinka. For more than five years, Europe was one huge concentration camp. The most terrible of all was Auschwitz. Auschwitz is located near Krakow in Poland. It was here that fascism created an experimental laboratory, a death factory equipped with refined tools used on an enormous scale, an entire industry of mass destruction created according to Hitler's ideas and his cannibalistic system. The notions and inventions developed by Nazi science and technology became gruesome reality in precisely executed projects in this Nazi death camp. Here is the camp's floor plan. Between 10 and 12,000 corpses were cremated daily in six ovens. German factories produced the equipment for the destruction of human beings. Four million people were murdered in Auschwitz. The camp completely met its quota. The fascist architects built stables where human beings waited to die. The floor plan of a barracks. Here, a barracks that was built according to plan and how the fighters of the Red Army found it. This is how people had to live, as long as they could bear that kind of life. Above the camp gate, the sneering word of command, work makes you free, mean blasphemy. How liberating it was could be seen in the double row of barbed wire set under the camp's high voltage fences. The electric current was regulated through a switchboard. 180 of the 2,819 people liberated by the Red Army here were children. 52 were under eight years old. How did they manage to survive this hell? These children were kept for special experiments. All others were killed. Like mice or rabbits, these children were used for medical experiments. Fascist executioners with medical diplomas. The camp doctors, Dr. Schmidt and Dr. Mengele, each had devised his own experiment. The only survivors seen here are twins. They don't know their names. They don't know their families. Only numbers are burned into children's arms. Now they find their way back to life. The camp is empty, but the inextinguishable traces of Hitler's brutish crimes remain, traces that are evidence of crime. Here is an oven where human beings were cremated. Before retreating, the Gestapo tried to destroy everything that might serve as proof of mass murder. But the Hitler executioners were in too much of a hurry. Traces of murders remained after all. Here is the kitchen of these cannibals. The death machine that operated here did not produce garbage. Before they were killed, women's hair was cut off. Mounds of women's hair, stored in bales, 28 kilograms, 22 kilograms. Human hair was used by the German textile industry as raw material. 7,000 kilograms of hair, all that remains of 140,000 murdered women. Human hair was sold to mills and to mattress factories. Ground human bones were sold to the Stren Company as fertilizer. The sale of human corpses was big business. But that was not all of this gruesome trade. Dentists removed the corpses' teeth so they could save the gold fillings. The corpses' belongings were stored in 35 warehouses, piles of eyeglasses. How many died? if only one in 10 wore glasses. Storage rooms filled with laundry and clothes, mounds of laundry, 514,843 pieces of children's, women's, and men's clothing, shoes, 43,526 pairs. Even used toothbrushes and clothes brushes were saved shaving brushes too, suitcases with labels from around the world, Poland, Hungary, France, Czechoslovakia, Holland, Greece, Belgium.
The Germans blew up, burned, and destroyed much here. But in Auschwitz, every handful of earth accuses them. The dead, as well as the living of Auschwitz, demand accountability for four million murdered. The victims of fascism are paid their final respects. <laughs>